Okay, welcome back X-Traders, and I'm Marcy Coco with X-Trades, and I'm going to be reviewing the no November, uh, last week of November trade plans that I posted in the Watchlist channel. So um, after we review these plays very quickly, we're going to move over uh, to our uh, trade plan strategy, and we're going to look at one of the uh, random tips that uh, that strategy covers with a uh, vertical spread that I took with Netflix. Okay, so let's start with reviewing what we did this week. So this is November uh, 28th, and this was Monday, and uh, this was our, uh, we had, remember, we had the bearish and the bullish trade plans. Now remember, the way we come up with these trade plans is there's uh, basically half technical analysis and half fundamentals. Now, if you recall, in October, we, we did NEO, and we were uh, basically fundamentally bearish on NEO, uh, the general market sentiment, the Chinese economy, the NEO trend, the economic data coming out of China, the EV industry as well, um, but there were no upgrades or downgrades. But basically, this pointed uh, to a bearish uh, general market uh, sentiment for NEO. And we couple the fundamentals, and this is the basic uh, trade strategy. We couple those fundamentals with the technicals. So we looked at the ticker trend. Okay, This was obviously not for NEO. This is for a different ticker, um, which was bearish. We uh, learned how to draw support and resistance levels using different tactics. We learned about price patterns, and we uh, we looked at we actually didn't find many price patterns on Nia, and um, we looked at indicators that we did uh, with the Neptune trading system, the moving averages, and the RSI. Uh, which, by the way, the Neptune trading system highly recommended on the X Trades app online. Uh, you can get it, and. Um, so we coupled basically the technical analysis with the fundamental analysis, and we came up with NEO in October, where you know basically all the overvalued tickers were getting, uh, were experiencing all these outflows of money, and that money was was obviously going either to the sidelines on cash, or into value tickers. So we took advantage of that, and we played NEO to the downside, uh, and in November. Uh, we actually did uh, something different. Uh, because money was still probably not going to be flowing into you know, the high-tech, overvalued high-tech uh, industry, we, uh, we decided that in November we were going to look at defensive stocks. Uh, so we basically drew up trade plans for defensive stocks. And like I said, those trade plans come out of the technical analysis and the fundamentals analysis. So. Let's look at what we came up with. Uh, Bank of America, which is a financial, definitely a defensive stock. Um, and this is <clears throat> this was our plan. Uh, we came up with, again, but, uh, an, a, a bullish trade plan and a bearish trade plan, just in case you never know. So this was our uh, bearish trade plan. And so far, up to yesterday, it worked. Uh, as you can see, Monday was uh, pretty red. Uh, so that was a... Um, that was, that was, uh, uh, pretty good run right there if we would have bought the puts. Um, and on Tuesday, we actually reached our lower target, which was uh, somewhere around 36.64. Okay, So we would have actually gotten out of that trade, uh, probably, and left a runner, if anything, for today, Wednesday. Uh, let me break into the four hour just to take a better look here. Yep. So on today, Wednesday, which is starts here, so these are the three candles for today, Wednesday, um, or two candles, rather. This one is uh, after hours. So we definitely would have, uh, as you can see here, uh, reached the, uh, the low price target and would have gotten out of our trade and probably, like I said, left a runner uh, for uh, the rest of the week, out of which, of which, we would have gotten out of, obviously, um, well, actually, no, because this is after hours, so we probably would have, um, uh, 
we would have had to get out sometime tomorrow. So we'll see how that plays out. But um, this would have been a win for sure right here on Bank of America. We also looked at Pfizer, which is another uh, defensive on the healthcare. And this one, we had the bearish, uh, let me go back to the daily here. Uh, let me see here. here. This was, we actually uh, played this from the beginning of November, which was somewhere uh, over here. And it's been very bullish and we definitely would have um, reached our price target today, actually, at the end of the day. Uh, so Pfizer worked out well. Um, Oxy was another one. And um, Oxy actually uh, broke into uh, into our, um, this is, I believe, yeah, this is about mid-November. It broke into the downside or the bearish uh, trade plan around the middle of November and look how well that would have done and then today uh, we're again uh, a lot lower we're probably looking to bounce off of the, bo the bottom of this channel so this one would have worked out quite well and then the last one that I believe we looked at was AT&T and AT&T was the one that didn't really do much uh, as you can see it barely broke into um, uh, into our uh, entry level and it didn't go very far. Now we still have um, a couple of more days left here uh, up to December 2nd and uh, it might actually uh, turn green or greener uh, into tomorrow and Friday given the uh, very good news today um, and so that might actually end up driving uh, AT&T higher. So I think it's pretty clear that our trade plan or our trade strategy, sorry, the strategy that we've developed uh, and tested uh, over a period of two months so far on different types of tickers uh, has yielded some very good trade plans and very profitable trade plans. So we basically combine the technicals with the fundamentals. And if you guys need more pointers on this, um, you know, you can DM me on Discord or uh, we can set up a tutoring, a mentoring session, sorry, to go over some of these. Um, and like I said, the other thing that I wanted to cover uh, other than the general trade plan strategy was a few, were some of these uh, random tips, okay? Uh, there's a video recently out on risk management, which uh, is in the video lessons channel, which I highly recommend you guys check out. Uh, but which talks about you know how to size your trade, you know, and instead of taking like one three hundred or one four hundred dollar call, you know, take a few, take a few a um, hundred or even seventy five dollar calls, and that way you can um, basically you know exit at fifteen percent, exit at thirty percent, exit at seventy five percent, and then maybe leave a runner if you want. But runners and sizing <clears throat> of uh, a lot of contracts instead of just one big contract which is basically putting all your eggs in one basket uh, is definitely one of the more important uh, tips on being successful um, and uh, we mentioned focusing on percentage gain you know we want to follow how much we make in a trade uh, looking at the percentage of how much you put in not the absolute value uh, because it's very easy to get um, you know to get up to like ten or twenty dollars if you only bought one contract and then you're thinking to yourself well but ten and twenty dollars that's not a lot I want to make like a hundred bucks or I want to make like five hundred bucks on one contract well that's probably not going to happen in the beginning and definitely not with the smaller uh, option contracts that you might want to be able to trade in the beginning so you got to focus on percentage you know as soon as you make fifteen percent then you get out you know, and if you made 15% on one contract and that only represented $15, the solution is not to get a more expensive contract. The solution is to get more of those cheaper contracts and exit them with a runner strategy and a percentage exit strategy. And that's how you're going to make a hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollars on one trade. Okay, so uh, those are some of the tips that we covered very quickly in the first video that we did. Um, and then we'll go over some of these other ones later, but uh, when, when I make the actual like video of 
all of these topics. But the next one that I the last one that I wanted to cover on this video was something that I did this week with one of the uh, trade alerts that one of the analysts put out, and it has to do with uh, this one right here, naked versus spreads. So normally, what's alerted in the Discord channel uh, is a naked or a single options contract. So it's either you know BTO buy to open this call or buy to open this put. Okay. There's uh, seldom have I seen, but I have seen uh, some uh, sell to open. Normally, it's just buy to open. So you either buy a uh, call or you buy a put. Now, the attractive uh, quality of buying a single, you know, whether it's a call or a put, is that you can make a lot of money. But the downside to that, if you are not a diamonds hand professional trader, then you are probably going to get uh, jittery. You know, you're probably going to get paper hands like I do, and um, it just it happens. It's normal. You know, it's psychology. You can try it out. If you go and paper trade, uh, you're going to be taking Tesla calls, Amazon calls. You know, and you're going to be riding them all the way to like a hundred or two hundred, three hundred percent. The minute that you actually put your own money, your like real money into a trade then you're like, okay, no, wait, I'm not going to take that, you know, a $1,000 call on Tesla. You know, uh, I'm not even going to take that $500 call on Netflix. I'm going to go for like a $100 call on, you know, something else. And then that's a problem because you start uh, trying to get cheaper calls, which have a much smaller probability of ending up in the money. So what you want to do is instead of going for cheaper calls, you want to use the spread. So I have here, actually, let me switch over real quick to Netflix because this is the call that was alerted um, somewhere, I believe, in here. Yeah, it was like mid November. There it is. Okay, so it was a Netflix call, and um, it might have actually been somewhere here. It was a Netflix call and it was a 330 strike. Now, let's take a look at what Netflix has been doing uh, so far. Okay, so it's been trading in this channel, so it hits the top of the channel, it bounces back down, it hits the bottom of the channel, bounces back up, hits the top here, it ran into some support right there at 254, it headed back up, bounced off the top of the channel, started heading back down. Now, somewhere around here, um, a Netflix 330 call, was called out or alerted to. The idea, I wasn't the analyst that alerted to it, but I'm guessing that his idea or her idea was that it would bounce off of the, this middle line right here, which you can see acts at, as a support right here, and then support here again, and then broken, and then it acts as resistance, and then resistance again, and then resistance again. It, and then the only reason why it breaks over it is because it gapped, but then it acted as support again, and then once again here, it acted as support again. So the analyst was probably thinking, okay, it hit this thing. It's going to act as support. It's going to go back up to the top of the channel. It's probably going to go all the way up to 330. So they made the alert for the 330 call. And they gave themselves uh, quite a bit of time because it was for December expiration. So I went ahead and I bought this call. And I have it, I believe, right here. Okay, so there's the December 3.30 call. And so normally, when you see an alert like this, you'll see $567. You'll be like, no, I'm not touching that thing. It's $567 that could evaporate just like that. Okay, if you don't have any idea of what that trade plan might have been, and that's why it's so important to read or to study technical analysis, if you can't look at this chart and say, Actually, let me go ahead and bring this in and use it to cover it up. You know, if the alert is made, let's say that it was made here, you know, which kind of makes sense. It bounced with a bullish hammer off that middle trend line. You're thinking, okay, if this thing bounced off of this support line, which was also this uh, price level support right here, then you're probably not even eyeing 330 as a possible uh, as a possible target. So what happens is, you look at 567, you've got no clue where this thing is going, you have no charting experience, you don't you haven't you don't have any 
uh, support and resistance lines. You don't have any trend lines, any channels, any price patterns. Actually, I didn't see if there was a price pattern on here. That doesn't look like much. But basically, you look at that and you say to yourself, if you're like me, you know, a jittery paper hands trader, hmm, 567, that's a lot of money to lose on a call. You'll be like, nah, I don't think so. So this was actually taken, I believe, oh, no, unfortunately, this was taken today. Let me see if I can find the same picture that I took of that. No, I don't believe I have it, unfortunately. When I took this yesterday, it was... Um, I was down like $83, okay? So I had the call, and this call went from 567 and it had gone down to like, I believe it was something like $66, okay? So I was down like $419, something like that right here, or more, I can't remember. The point is, when you see a naked call, a single call alerted to in the channel, one of the things that you can do is... Go ahead and take that call, and that's going to cost you 567. But then go a strike up above and sell that call. Okay, now let's think about this for a minute. What you're saying is, I expect this to go above 330. Okay, so you're going to make money if this thing breaks and runs over 330. But mm, you know what? Three, it's not going to go higher than 335. So anything below 335, I make money. Okay. So what's going to happen is that you're basically going to be trading in a range. Uh, and that range is going to be between 330 and 335. You know that it's definitely going to be, like in this case, let's say that it, it, it ends up at 305. It's not above 330, so this single call loses money. But it's definitely below 335. So this one makes money. Okay? And they don't make and lose money in the exact amount, but it definitely limits your loss. Now let's do a quick calculation right here. Um, this thing cost 567, and it made me, when I sold it, 467. Okay? So that's a hundred dollar maximum loss. That's what I paid for it. I paid a hundred bucks for it. Well, plus fees or whatever. But if this thing goes from 567 to zero, okay, because it didn't reach 330, which it didn't, let's say if we're assuming that it stayed at 305, then I will have lost $567. But if it didn't reach 330, it definitely didn't reach 335. So this thing will expire out of the money and I keep the 467 because I sold that call. Okay, so the 567 minus the 467 gives you a $100 um, entry, okay, or a cost, but that cost is your limited loss, your limited risk. Okay? The more, the most that you're going to lose is $100. That's the more, the most you can lose on this trade. So yesterday, when this thing was I, the numbers aren't going to, you know, obviously make a lot of uh, sense now, but I was basically going over, and I'm probably not going to go over all of those numbers because I went through like the delta and the gamma, and uh, as you can see, I looked over like ATR, which is basically how much a stock moves, um, you know, like uh, in a certain range. Uh, so it basically gives you how much it move it will move per day. So I came up with a number somewhere between like nine uh, and five. Um, and then I actually ran the ATR indicator and it gave me something like eight. So I was thinking, because I was right here yesterday, remember this is the daily chart, so this bar right here didn't exist yesterday. But I'm looking at, again, what sort of looks like a bullish hammer because it's definitely more movement to the upside than there was to the downside. It looks like it's rejecting whatever this level might have been here. Okay, uh, which for all intents and purposes is probably this level uh, over here, 282. So it looks like it was rejecting this. And again, it might be the same strategy that the original analyst uh, was looking at when he saw this thing bounce uh, on the middle line. So 
I was down about a hundred dollars yesterday because this thing was going down. Remember, the strongest contract here, the one that's gonna, let's say, the one that could make or lose most amount of money is the bought call at 567. So this has been going down. So ever since I bought this at a hundred dollars, it has been going basically. It went up a little bit. Uh, the first day and then went down 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 three days in a row it just kept going down okay so I was losing up to a hundred dollars yesterday so my idea yesterday which I set up on this text note here which I'm not gonna you know read through the whole thing because um, it'll be kind of boring but basically what I was thinking was okay so I have to manage the spread now because I definitely didn't lose it even if this was a hundred it wasn't 567 Okay, so that's the first takeaway that I want you guys to have here is that when you take a single, you're risking a lot more. And when it gets to be $567 worth of risk, then you think it twice. You know, you think you think it over and you end up probably opting not to take the single. Okay, but it might end up being a good trade. You know, it's just that it's a lot of money. So what you do is you, like I said, you sell the strike above, in the case of the call, on the put, it's different. And you end up, instead of paying 567, you end up paying $100, which, which we just uh, calculated right here. So $100 is a lot more uh, acceptable risk, you know, depending on your portfolio size, than 567. So once you make it to like minus $100, which I was looking at down here, so I was starting to think, okay, this thing might keep dropping a little bit, but eventually it's going to have to bounce back up, you know? And so there's a couple of things you could do. One of them is, okay, so the one that's making money is obviously this sold call. This one is in the red. And it's probably going to be, at least up to yesterday, it was probably going to be in the red for a lot longer. So I was thinking, mm, this is, you know, pretty much lost. But I can take this and I can sell I can buy it back, okay, so I'll make $174, I'll buy this sold call back and just see if write it out as a single, which is very risky in the sense that you could lose a lot more um, because there's still some value left in this, okay, it's worth $290 right now, but you could still make those $292 from now until expiration if this thing goes completely to zero. <clears throat> But the point is that um, one of the strategies that you could take is to basically take the profit on this one because you're expecting it to actually bounce back up, you know, and this minus 184, as this thing keeps riding up, you know, it was down here at minus 184, it's going to be like minus, you know, uh, 100, it's going to be like minus 84, eventually it's going to be like... Uh, minus, you know, one, and what whatever happens from here on in, if this thing takes off, then you will make money because you will have collected $174, and this thing, let's say that this was, it is $184, so you're in the red, but if you sell this one right now, or buy it back, sorry, and you hold out with this call, basically in your hand, this single call, this loss is going to reduce from 184 to 100 to 84 to 50 and that means that you will have made 174 minus a much smaller loss maybe 10 20 bucks so 174 minus the 20 buck loss is only 150 before you still made money okay so that's one option that you can do with spreads the other one you can do is that you can sell you can buy this one back Okay, so you already took one 174, and you can sell another one again for December, but with a lower strike. Okay, and so I was looking at this yesterday, and I could have bought the 300 one. Here it is for 425 dollars. I could have sold. Sorry, but about that, I could have bought this one back, made 174. So let's punch that in our calculator here. So you make 174, yeah, you're still losing 184. But one, the, the other thing that you could have done is, okay, now sell the 330, 
which yesterday was three it was four hundred twenty five dollars so I could have uh, sold the 330 for 425 so if I sell that for 425 then I'll make the 174 pocketed right now whoops sorry about that okay so I pocket 174 right now and then add to that 425 of the of the other sold call and that's 600 bucks okay so even if this thing uh, goes all the way down you will have lost 567 which means that you're left with $32 of profit if this thing like I said um, doesn't reach the 330 but it doesn't go past the 300 which would be somewhere around here so those would have been two um, two different options that I would have had or two alternatives that I would have had in case that this thing just you know, it, it reaches a point where it's negative and you're trying to salvage it. There's two ways to do it, okay? Um, you either just get rid of this one and then you keep this one and, uh, and basically hope that it's going to go, you know, from a big loss to a smaller loss. Or you actually take another sold call, sell that against it, and hope to profit out of that one. Again, in both cases, you need technical analysis to give you an idea of how far this thing could go. Now, this was obviously not normal. Uh, this thing went from the open of 281 to the close of 305. That's $19 in one day. If we look at the ATR, which I'm not sure if it's still in here. No, I don't think it is. But I know I have it in here. Or did yesterday, anyway. Uh, ATR... I'm actually going to favorite that. That's how you favorite in trading view, by the way. Okay, so go ahead and click on it and it'll add it to the chart. Okay, so here's where it was. See, it was at about, at about 11. And then j just today it moved 19. You know, in one day. So now it jumped back. It's, it's up to 1284, practically 13. Okay, so this was obviously not a normal move. But, um, and then now my $100 loss is down to $10, okay? And this is looking quite well for the end of the week, so I'm gonna basically stay bullish on this one, I'm gonna leave it open. But what I wanted to basically cover was, when you see a big, you know, a, a very expensive alert, you know, made in the alerts channel, and, you know, 567, you're like, no, I don't wanna take that, that's too much money, I could lose $567, go ahead, and buy and sell the next strike above that same contract okay and that way you're collecting some money if it stays below that number which it definitely will if it doesn't blow past the 330 okay so uh, this is just one of those tips it's not so much a tip it's actually a strategy it's vertical spread it's a combination of options contracts that it does cap your gain because you obviously cannot make so much because after <clears throat> this thing shoots past 335 then this one is going to lose a lot of money uh basically all 467 and basically you uh, whatever you made on the upside gets reduced or limited or capped by whatever you lost to the downside so it does cap your gains but it also limits your risk quite a bit because if you know if basically if somebody asks you would you prefer to lose five hundred sixty seven dollars or a hundred dollars well, I think it's pretty clear uh, that we would uh, much prefer to just lose a hundred dollars so vertical spreads are a very good strategy for people who uh, get into a trade it's really expensive uh, you don't want it to be that expensive because you probably don't have enough time to be monitoring it and waiting for this thing to go, you know, maybe it goes up to five. I believe it, it did. It did go up the next day. This was the, the next day after I bought it. It did go up and it was, you know, probably went up to like, you know, 580 or 590. Uh, and so, again, use percentages. So if it went up to 590 out of the 567 that it cost, that's a 4% gain, you know. Uh, I didn't have time to be watching it all day, uh, so I figure, you know, if I don't have the time, and it's a very expensive trade, but
but it's a very good ticker with a you know and I, and I have the you know the trading the technical analysis tells me that it's a good strategy it's a good alert then I want to take it I just don't want to risk five hundred and sixty seven dollars so verticals are a very good strategy if you don't have the time to be glued to your monitor and you know keeping tabs on a five hundred and sixty seven dollar trade because when it does go down it goes down you know uh, and you lose quite a bit less than if you would have taken the single okay so that's basically one of what I wanted to cover uh, to end the month of November and in December I will probably be looking at uh, more of these spreads in detail uh, I'll try to take those in the uh, take the ones in from the discord alerts and basically uh, make those uh, into spreads and that is what I'm going to be looking at for the month of December basically the, uh, I'm going to recap this whole trading strategy in in one more video, and I've got some examples here. I've started to work on some slides, but it got like too long, so I kind of don't want to uh, make it such a long video. So I'm going basically going to in the month of December, I'm going to recap the trading plan. You know, how do you do technicals? How do you do fundamentals? How do you put them into your trading plan? And then you know these tips that will probably focus a lot more on spreads. Uh, going forward. The month of December uh, should be a Santa rally, especially after Powell's gift today. So I'm uh, I'm going to be bullish for the month of um, of uh, December, but that also means that it's going to be a good month to hedge uh, any trades uh, to the downside. Okay, because if this thing is going to keep going up, uh, not Netflix, sorry, uh, well, I do expect Netflix, but SPY in general, if this thing is going to keep going up and, oh, look at that, it just actually hit the top of that trend line. So tomorrow is going to be very decisive. What I had was this rising wedge, which is going to hit the, the, the top of that downtrend line. Um, so basically, if this thing pops over and retests that trend line, then I'm going to be bullish for the rest of December. If this thing comes back down, it's probably going to probably going to hit this uh, the bottom of the wedge right here and it's still going to rally into December but then or at least until the end of this December so I'm still going to be bullish for the month of December but as soon as um, you know we get a rejection off of this trend line then I'm definitely going to be looking to hedge uh, some uh, with some spy puts for uh, the next few months the beginning of 2023 so Remember to always look at the general market sentiment, not just the individual ticker. Uh, and then you combine that with your technical analysis and you have trade plans, either to the upside or to the downside. And whatever, uh, whatever happens during that week, you know, you got to basically follow your plan. You know, stick to your stop losses, limit your losses, and definitely use uh, more than one contract. Keep an eye on percentage gains not absolute value gains and whenever you reach your reach your uh, uh, your target prices take your profits and then leave a runner so for t in order to do that you must have taken at least two contracts for a specific trade all right so i hope that that was useful if you guys have questions on any of this stuff go ahead and uh, send me a dm uh, i'm uh, i'm online on discord pretty much uh, every day uh, during trading hours, but I'm also available after trading hours and probably have more time to answer your questions. But um, yeah, go ahead and uh, hit me up and I'll see you tomorrow. Great.